Well, I joined the group, I think it would probably been going for about a year, because I would have joined in 2017. Our son uh, moved from CAMS into early intervention, and I was told about the group. Do you know, I can't remember if it was Adam who we were having family therapy with, okay. or with, or by Sam's care coordinator, but I joined the group um, when it was in person. I probably came along to Lucian Carer Centre for the first time, um, and I found it a lifesaver. I'd already been going to a CAMS group that was a similar setup, and that was a, like my first lifesaver, just being in a room with other people that um, really understood what was going on. Because I, I think it, when you've got family and friends, they can be supportive and sympathetic, but they don't get it. Mm. I mean, mental illness wasn't on my radar until our son got ill. I wouldn't have had, had a clue. And just being in a room with other people that have, you know, either been through what you're going through or, you know, um, it, it is, it's a lifesaver. And I carried on attending. Um, and then I got more involved with what's called the involvement register for SLAM. And so that I then carried on attending even after our son, if you like, graduated from early intervention. Um, and I think I was hoping that I was uh, supporting people in the same way that I'd been supported by the group. Because yeah. I think you see new people turning up and you can see the look on their face and, and it, you know that, that, you know, I was there six months ago. That's how I was looking six months ago. I don't know about you. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, a very similar um, yeah. experience. My uh, One of my sons um, had an episode of psychosis and was under the care of the early intervention team. Um, and the care coordinator spoke to us about the group. Um, so once, once I came along and... I found, as, as Margaret said, that being in a room with others and also thinking about how I was feeling and how confused and how lost and how frightened, mm -hmm. um, and I literally just wanted to hear someone say, it's going to be fine, mm -hmm. or, you know, it's all right to laugh about this, because mm -hmm. I felt that we had to be rigid, we had to be kind of, you know, you couldn't be yourself, you had to be on guard all the time and on duty all the time. And it's not um, your fault as well. Yeah, yeah no, and that's that another thing, thing. yes, yeah, but also... Yeah. Um, not only that, but you, you feel guilt anyway. Um, but I found that having been able to talk to other parents and other family members um, to kind of explain to them that this, you know, we were doing sort of educational things that were kind of, because you had questions that you didn't know where to ask. Mm -hmm. um, and even it might be something really simple, like, you know, oh, they don't want to take their medication, what do you do? That kind of thing. Um, and so from that, having done some previous training with staff, it kind of followed on that we became peer supporters of the group, but also presenting different topics as well that are kind of peculiar to carers and relevant to carers and family. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the, one of the things that I found really supportive, like you say, taking medication advice on, you know, uh, it, it's, it's one thing to get a professional's view, but we as carers, I think, see it as from a completely different perspective, don't we? Oh, definitely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Because if you're trying to kind of persuade your loved one to do what they basically don't want to do. Yeah. And I think one of the big things um, is for other carers to see carers who are further along their journey so that when they're kind of at the beginning and they think, oh my gosh, this is going to last for 10 years and how's this going to work out? You see someone that can say to you, look, I was in that position and things can get better, things do change. Mm -hmm. And I think give a realistic view as well because we're not sitting there saying, oh, it's all going to be fine and give it a month and everything will mm -hmm. be all right. We're giving a realistic view of how it really is as a mm -hmm. family member and how things can improve. Mm. I had, yeah. Although our son has had his ups and downs since, yeah. and I have sort of stepped out when he's had another crisis. Yeah. But, Which, I mean, he's working now, you know, he's living well. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I do explain that when I come to the group to give people hope, I suppose, you know. Yeah. And I think as well it's, it's a true picture of what you might expect because everyone is so different. Mm. So one's journey would not be 
very the same as someone else's, but mm. it's about saying that things do change mm. and they don't always stay the same and you might have a good road and then something goes wrong and then you're back up again, but it's still knowing that that support is there whenever you want it, whenever you need, you know, you can sort of tap mm. in, tap out, mm. that kind of thing, mm. yeah. You know?